friends, today we're gonna make a fantastic football helmet, clicky fidget. So let's get cracking. Today's project starts with a template. You can get there by typing bit.ly slash HL opener. This project is set to copy and tinker, so don't forget the golden rule of Tinkercad. Give a reaction before you copy and tinker. When this opens, you have got parts to build a sweet opener. If you check right over here, there is a link that shows you how to customize this for whatever team you want. There are also parts right here. This is what we are going to use for our awesome clicky fidget. It is handy to save these so you can make other fidgets. Let me show you the steps. Simply click on one. Choose your creations and choose create shape. We're going to call this key cutout. We are going to lock the part size, it stays a hole, and we're simply going to hit save shape. After a moment, it appears right here. You can see I have already done that. So you can also click on it and hit delete so you don't have extra copies. Of course, we click on this and we create this shape as well. It's the same as before, but this one I called key cap cutout. Now let me show you how we use these parts to make an awesome clicky fidget. So this is the helmet shape. Right now, if we check its measurements, it's 70 by 60. Fidgets are cooler in my... I like to make my fidgets less than 50, so I'm gonna shrink this down into the 40s. I'm gonna shrink this down to 40 by 50. <clears throat> All right, let's... All right, so let me show you how to make this a clicky fidget. So first, it's currently 70 by 60. I like to make these smaller than 50, so I'm just going to shift shrink and get it down close to 50, and then I need to make an outline for this. That's the ridge that makes this work. Now, friends, this project works because this piece is an imported SVG. So check this out. I'm going to hit Control D. So there are two of them. I'm going to switch to a fill mode of outer line. I'm going to make it round. I'm going to maximize the quality, and I'm going to type 1 for the size I want it to grow by. So see how it is larger by one millimeter all the way around. If I switch it to a different color, it does show up a little better. This is gonna give us a gap around the helmet when we make walls. So all we do is click on the new blue one that is larger and we export it as a new SVG. Only the selected shape, I'm gonna call it copy of an opener and I'm going to put a two after it because it's the larger one. And then I'm just going to turn around and import that new piece. Once again, copy of the opener. There's the number two. I want to choose art and keep the measurements. When this one arrives, it matches the other one exactly. But what we can do is maximize its quality, switch to outer line mode, give it a measurement of one, and of course make it round. And after a moment, it will snap. And if we align these all, L for align and choose center and center, you can see that there's now that blue outline all the way around. So let me show you how this all comes together. All right, with that part built, let's turn this into the clicky fidget. I'm gonna pull these up closer and we're gonna align our parts. Let's click on the center helmet and let's do shift select on the hole choose L for a line, click the helmet to make it the boss, and choose center and center. Now, because of the way the face mask sits out here, that doesn't line up correctly. So we're just going to use the arrow keys to pick what we think is the middle. I think that looks pretty good. Then we're going to take the pink piece, and we're going to change its measurements to 12, and press enter. Then we're going to hide these pieces so it's easier to grab what we want. And now we can select all of that, choose L for a line, make the pink one the boss, and we need that part to come to the top. Now this isn't really poking out, so we need to set it to point 0.1. Click on that hole. Notice I missed, so I'm going to click again. Now I've got the hole, and do control up to line that up. Let's hit show all to bring all those parts back. These two pieces have got to be lined up exactly, so we're going to shift select that hole. We're going to do L for a line. We're going to make this one the boss and choose center and center. Now, if we look underneath, this is where the hole is. We're going to click on it, and for a moment, we're going to lock it. 
Now we're going to take this piece and we want to reuse it in a minute. So we're going to do control D. I'll make the second one blue. And I'm going to hide it. So now we can shift select these two parts and do control G to group. And now if we quickly do show all, we can click on the pink one. Make sure you've got the pink one. Notice it says now it's two colors. So I'm going to hide that. And we're going to take this blue one and we're going to make it 4.5 millimeters tall. And real quickly, I'm going to hit T for transparent so you can see the piece that is under it. Now it is perfectly aligned for our project, but that key cap is flipped because sometimes I print these upside down. I'm going to real quickly hide this one. Let's click on our shape and we need to unlock that one now. And we need to flip it with the mirror command, which is the letter M. Now it's going to be placed exactly how a key would. We can hit show all. Once again, hide the cutout. I'm going to make this back to a solid by shutting off transparent. I'm also going to hide these two edges. That way we don't accidentally grab them. And we can grab these two parts and let's finally group them. Notice the red lines mean it is grouping. Of course, once it finishes, check and make sure it cut out the way you wanted. Once I hit show all, I'm going to click on the blue one and shift nudge it to the right. And now let's wrap up our project by getting the walls right. Remember, we set this to 12, so we need to click on this one and make it 12 as well. Let's hit show all again and bring back that pink wall. And I am going to choose to make this wall 17 high for this project. Of course, I'm going to get this back on my grid just a little bit better. Friends, of course, this is where you get to add all your fun logos. You can see I've got an awesome Detroit Lions logo on mine. I have got a tutorial that shows you how to make any team's logo college professional or even your high school. Of course, I'll add that in the cards. Friends, right now, let's get it ready for printing. I'm going to hide this for a moment so I can just grab the logo. And I'm going to do export as in STL. I always put them in my 3D modeling folder. I'm going to call this Lions Fidget Logo. And save the changes. Now I'm going to do Show All. And I'm going to hide the logo, which I had made with three separate pieces. And I'm going to grab all the helmet parts, and I'm going to export those as a separate STL. This will be called Lions Fidget and save the changes. I like to use this technique because then when I bring them into Bamboo Studio, they stay aligned and they're super easy to add the colors. Let's head to Bamboo Studio and I'll show you those steps. Of course, the first thing we do is add the files. Since I've got them as separate pieces, I can grab them as a pair. Just choose open, let it know that I do want these as a single object, multiple parts. Now notice it has errors. That is usually because these logos are so tiny. I'm going to simply hit repair. It only takes a moment and I am back in business as I zoom in. Everything looks the way I want. I'm going to quickly switch to object mode. And of course, I want the logo to be a blue. So I'm just going to swap it like that. Real quickly, let's check our settings. I'm going to use the 0.2 standard when we move over here and hit slice plate. As you can see, it's going to take less than 50 minutes. Let's hit print plate, double check those colors. I do approve, so I'm going to hit send to the 3D printer. After a moment, of course, it bounces to the device menu. And after a moment's wait, it finishes downloading. Of course, we can click play and monitor everything from afar. Here we are, less than 50 minutes later. Parts ready? to make a clicky fidget. And of course, friends, my favorite part, as you can see, that fits inside there absolutely perfect. Let's grab one of our little keyboard switches. Make sure you check it for the edge that matches the side. See that little ridge? We can simply push it in. You'll hear it snap. You can grab the top, push it in as well, and bingo, instant clicky fidget. 
You can customize it for whatever team you want. I'll have links to those tutorials in the cards. Friends, of course, I hope you enjoyed the video and you're having a blast with your little clicky fidgets. If you do make something awesome, don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take a moment to share it with the HLMT23 tag. Finally, friends, I want to thank my supporters on Patreon. Don't forget you can learn all about it with the links down below or the bit.ly up above. Finally, friends, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget, every time you hit that like button, share a video, add a comment down below, or hit subscribe. You're helping HL Mod Tech get just a little bit bigger, which absolutely makes my day. Friends, have a glorious day, and keep tinkering.